High School Basketball is on the air. The Oneida Indians, the Scott Highlanders, with Tim Smith, Rick Keaton, and their entire broadcast teams. Sponsored by United Cumberland Bank, Scenic Foods, Razax, El Rey, Mark's Family Pharmacy, South Fork Physical Therapy, Stand, T&T Car Wash, Baby J's Pizza, Mountain Peoples, Twin K Enterprises, Markham's Furniture, Danny's Drugs, and First National Bank. Produced by the IH Sports Network, high school basketball begins now. Good evening and welcome to Oneida High School for the final night of the District 3A Basketball Tournament. As the <clears throat> game coming up here in a few moments, the consolation game featuring the Wartburg Bulldogs and the Coalfield Yellow Jackets. Later on tonight, it will be the District 3A Championship as the Oneida Indians will be taking on the Oliver Springs Bobcats. It's Kevin Akers along with Mark Matthews, Stuart Jones, Bo Kidd, and the voice of the Indians, Tim Smith. And this, of course, is the Baby J's Pizza pregame report. Baby J's Pizza, if you give them a call right now at 286-2229. They have pizza, wings, sandwiches, a whole lot more, and they can bring that, deliver that to you here within about the next 30 minutes or so. And you can sit back and enjoy a nice pizza while you watch the game here on the IH Sports Network. Big consolation game coming up, big rivalry game coming up here in just a few minutes. Certainly is. Uh, you got Coldfield Yellow Jackets, Wartburg Bulldogs, you know, just right down the road from each other, guys. And, and uh, it's always been a big rivalry. The first game was was uh, relatively close, 59 to 53. The second one got out of hand. Both wins for Coldfield. 73-42 uh, was the score of that, of that second one. Don't know if there was some something going on or what, but – but it got away, got away quick for Cofield. Cofield has the ability uh, to uh, uh, really take control of things if they want to. They've got some real athletes, Bo, and on, on their basketball team. Wartburg, Wartburg's kind of young. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. You know, uh, you take a look at the roster. Uh, Wartburg, I think they only had two seniors, I believe, on the entire roster. rest of the roster, I'm pretty sure, was freshmen and sophomores, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, they did have a uh, – Second team all district player and Andrew Good. He had uh, 16 points in that first contest against uh, Coalfield. Had 13 in the second one. Uh, they are a team that's got a bright future ahead of them. Really they got do. a lot. They got a lot of young talent. Uh, they just haven't found that point where they're just clicking on all cylinders just yet. Yeah, and you got a Coalfield team that's got nine seniors. Very, yes, very senior laden team and and. Uh, uh, they're going to be tough to handle tonight, and they're going to want to get to this third-place spot. Gives them a, a little bit better seating in the uh, region tournament. All right, thank you, gentlemen. When we return to the Baby J's Pizza pregame report, we're going to look in on the Roarch's Pharmacy scouting report and get a little bit more in-depth detail on both Wartburg and Coalfield for tonight's consolation game coming back right after this. Welcome back to Oneida and the Baby J's Pizza pregame report. It's the District 3A consolation game tonight on the boys' side. It's the Wartburg Bulldogs and the Coalfield Yellow Jackets coming up here in just a few more minutes. Guys, it's now time for the Roarch's Pharmacy scouting report. Roarch's Pharmacy shaped by the unique community we serve. What's a little bit in-depth on both Wartburg and Coalfield? Well, I, I'll have to tell you about Coalfield of uh, uh, Rommel Conlon and Braden Burgess. Bo. They you got it. Those are the guys that, that the ball's going to go through, and that's their two leading scorers. Braden's their a leading rebounder on that team. And uh, how, how they play is how – is how their uh, how this game will go, I believe. Don't forget about the third man, Cole Hines. He'll be a he's, he's gonna a, be a, a good supporting yeah, star. Yeah, he's the director of traffic. Right yeah, there. I was gonna say them, he, yeah. he's the one that's always making it go one way or another. Defense like nobody. Yes, doing. he does. But now on the Wartburg side, you gotta look at Ian Robinson. Young man's a pretty good player. Uh, had 11 points against Oneida the other night in that semifinal uh, contest. Also got to look down at uh, I believe it's. Uh, Landon Quinney, he's a young man that's always, uh, always sort of seems to have a nose for the ball. Andrew Good, that's another one. Yeah, Absolutely, he's, he's he's their guy down low, and he's he's going to have uh, uh, if those three guys can can keep it 
don't yeah. and don't forget about big Lucas Wilson down there, big boy. Yeah, he he can get down there and muscle up with you a little bit. And yes, he, he can. And if he and if he establishes himself down low, it could be a long night. Absolutely, I agree. I agree. It's going to be a battle, and and with the with the rivalry the way it is, I think. We're probably going to see a little bit closer game than we did the last time. I yeah, this is one of those where you sort of – everybody always talks about throw the records out the window. Yeah. This is not going to be one of those four – This is you're not going to see a four-win Wartburg team out here tonight like they've been during the season. They're going to call, or they're going to call scratch, and fight for every point to get that win tonight. I agree with you, man. All right, thank you, gentlemen, for that. And that was the Roarks Pharmacy Scouting Report. Roarks Pharmacy, shaped by the unique community we serve. We're going to take a break here on the Baby J's Pizza pregame report. When we return, it'll be time for the out-of-town scoreboard sponsored by Helenwood Foods. A lot of good district championships across the area tonight. One we're going to be focusing on, of course, will be District 4 is who we match up with next week in the region. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Baby J's Pizza pregame report. It's now time to check out our Helenwood Foods out-of-town scoreboard. This week at Helenwood Foods, RC products, two liters for 99 cents. And they also have ribeye steaks and New York strip steaks for only $9.99 a pound. Bo, got a lot of key matchups tonight. Yeah, over in District 1, the consolation game features North Green and Uneka. Championship game will be a very good matchup. Hampton, 23-6, and six, taking on University High, 17-12 and 12 team. It should be a pretty interesting matchup over in District 1. Uh, over in District 2, Washburn and Hancock County will meet up in the consolation game. Jellico and Cosby match up in that district championship game. That should be a fun one to watch as well. Of course, here in District 3 tonight, you've got Coalfield and Wartburg uh, in the consolation game. Oneida and Oliver Springs will lock it up after this one here. Uh, in Oneida and then over in District 4, as you talked about, very ironic that you see uh, Greenback and Rockwood in game one there in the consolation game. But in the championship game, how often do you see two teams with overall losing records during the season in a championship game? The 9-17 and 17 Harriman Blue Devils will take on the 11-14 and 14 Oakdale Eagles. Yeah, and uh, – <laughs> and Her- Harriman's a really athletic team. Yes, man. They, they are. You know, they could. I could see where they could get in tournament play and do some damage. And, and that, you know that Oakdale Eagle team, I mean, we played them a couple of times yeah, we have. this year. And uh, uh, they battled us for a half. Yes, they did. They battled yes, us for a half. So, uh, two, two very capable teams right there, guys. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. And this will conclude the Baby J's Pizza pregame report. And that also, of course, includes concludes our Helmwood Foods out-of-town scoreboard. When we return, <clears throat> it'll be time for the McDonald's starting lineups and this consolation game featuring the Wartburg Bulldogs and the Coalfield the Yellow Jackets coming up right here on the IH Sports Network.
Keith Adcock with the national anthem always does a great job, not only of the national anthem, but also as his play-by-play -play announcing on WECO hits 30 years this year. And, Mark, yeah. here's something that, that I have always had a deep respect for that Keith does that we don't have to worry about. Keith covers – we cover one team. Keith covers – several teams we have a hard time keeping the people from our one team <laughs> happy with us and keith covers four or five years. six it, you know yeah. and he he does a great job and he's a great person and uh and he's a great singer as you just heard it's time for the mcdonald's of oneida starting lineups first for the fourth seed the visiting uniform wartburg bulldogs ba -da 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 -da. the bulldogs are in the road blue uniforms with white numerals trimmed in gray and for Wartburg tonight, they come in with a record of 4-21. and 21. They were 2-6 and six in district play. They got here uh, winning the play-in game against Sunbright and then fell to the Oneida Indians in the semifinals, so that puts them here in the consolation. The starters for Wartburg, senior Blaine Blaylock, sophomores Lawson Swint, Landon Queenie, Lucas Wilson, and a junior, Andrew Good. And now the starting lineups for the Coalfield Yellow Jackets, coached by Carmen Hines. The McDonald's have out of starting lineups. Coalfield in the white uniforms, black numerals trimmed in orange, and they will start four seniors and a freshman. The seniors are Rommel Conlon, Braden Burgess, Tucker West, Cole Hines. The freshman is Zachary Hamby. And it will become obvious as soon as you look at the pictures why Zachary Hamby is a freshman <laughs> yeah. starter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just wait. Actually, looks like he's uh, going to split out on the side. The jump will be Tucker West and Landon Queenie. You can see the size differential here uh, is in Coalfield's favor. Coalfield, very athletic team. They've got seven wins on the season, 17 losses, and uh, they will square it off here with the Wartburg Bulldogs in consolation action from District 3A brought to you tonight by First National Bank. The Coalfield Yellow Jackets control the tip, and this is Cole Hines in control. As you heard Mark and Bo talking about, he's the field general for this team, and he will be guarded here by Blaine Blaylock. Man-to-man -man defense for the Wartburg Bulldogs, and this is Coalfield continuing to work around the perimeter. Conlon takes a stab. Fires it down the baseline. That's going to be Braden Burgess. Steps back, thought about the three, which he can definitely knock down. Then he cuts to the paint for the shot, partially blocked. And then it's going to be a put back and good for Tucker West. That Coalfield counts, on the board first. Counts as an assist, I think. <laughs> Queenie kicks it out. Here's a two-point jumper up, no good from Lawson Swint. Rebound taken in by Coalfield. They're on the run down court. Conley. Gets control of it with the dribble. Now needs help down on the baseline. Braden Burgess is there to help him out. Burgess spins down in the paint, lays it up good. The post game early oh, for Coalfield. Yeah. yeah, what a spin move right there. Burgess and Conlon both going to be playing next level football as we've got the run and the score here for Wartburg, cutting the lead to 4-2. to two, But it's Tucker West on the run back at the other end, and he runs into the arm of... Mm. Wartburg's Lucas Wilson. Yeah. Uh, looked like Wilson had his feet set there. If he just took a dive, maybe he would have drew that, but that foul. But, uh, not so, to be. Tucker West will step in for two free throws, first of which is good, makes it 5-2. A little surprising to start off. Coalfield actually trying to get into a little bit of a fast-paced transition game when they're usually a much more slow, methodical half-court offense. Second toss is going to be no good, but Braden Burgess with three Bulldogs around him picks it away and now backs up on the left wing. Back out top. It's going to be Cole Hines on the drive. Leads it out on the right side to the freshman. And now it's going to be Burgess driving through and flicks the... Running one-hander up there, good. Burgess nice, knocks it down. Nice soft touch there by Burgess. Seven to two. Coalfield in the lead now. Queenie gets the basketball good. A deep three, and he knocked it down. We saw him fire the guns 
that Coach Jason Pike in the game here, he can hit that long-range shot, yes, Mark. He certainly can. Cuts it to a two-point game, but at the other end, it's Rommel Conlon attacking the hoop and laying it up and in. We played two minutes, a lot of scoring in two minutes as we get to the other end, and Wartburg's able to knock one in for Lucas Wilson. 16 points in two minutes yeah. between these two teams. Pretty, pretty sweet. That's the way we like it. We have a, an official time. Seems like there is a... Talks of spilt popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> a, a hazard on the sideline over there. Mark, that official, by the way, you can see him in the frame. I've never seen anybody get a warning in the hospitality room. <laughs> but Mark got one, Bo, am I right? He did. Yeah, he didn't look right at Mark. He didn't want to call him out and embarrass him, but he, he spoke around him tonight. Oh. No, yeah. Yeah, is that yeah. what happened? I believe it was. Yeah. <laughs> Call me out. Are you a little intimidated? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Tucker West. Now the Bulldogs going to the floor to save the possession. That's good hustle right there by Ryan Hall. Back to the other end. Good for three. No good off the back of the iron. And now Burgess is going to collect it. Keeps that pivot foot on the right toe. Planted yeah. down just enough to get it out to Cole Hines. And now Conlon. Gives it to Burgess for the three. No good. Rebound. A couple of Bulldogs in the area. Blaylock comes up with it. He'll bring it up the right side. His team trails by two. Blaine Blaylock, point guard for the Bulldogs, gets it to good. Now Queenie around to the corner. It's going to be Ryan Hall. Back out, Lawson Swint fires the three-pointer. It won't go. And it hits the out-of-bounds line and trickles out. Mark, he may have been meaning that at me. We don't know. Yeah, I mean, it may have been. I told him that I would certainly say good things about him. He knew that. You know that, though. Here's Colefield the other end with a two-point lead. Rommel Conlon's three-pointer won't go. And attempt to save yeah. it in by Tucker West. Couldn't quite Con do it. And Conlon's usually pretty deadly out there. He just needs to get warmed up a little bit. But he can hit it from out there. So here comes Wartburg. Another chance to try to tie, maybe take the lead on this possession. Queenie gets it to good. Good stepping left, leaves it off on the wing. Hall on the drive, loses the ball in the elbow. It's going to be picked up here by the freshman Hamby. This is him in transition. He'll get it to Cole Hines. Now down to Braden Burgess. Wartburg just kind of lost Burgess there and turned it over, but then Burgess loses Andrew Good, and he intercepts it and brings it the other way. In a two-point game, pitches to Queenie. He'll spot up for the three, and it's a Wartburg lead now, 10-9. to nine. Can't yep. leave him that open. No, well, it was a good screen set up there that got him open. Oh, picked it up just across, but a nice bounce feed from Rommel Conlon to Braden Burgess, and Colefield grabs the lead right back. Yep, those guys, are, are they play well off of each other. Back the other way, Lawson Swint to good. Now to the corner, Blaine Blaylock. Now Queenie hit the last shot, wants to drive in on Tucker West, gives to Blaylock, kind of fading left, and that mm. shot faded left. It's going to be rebounded by Cole Hines. Hines will get it ahead now. This is going to be, again, Hamby to West. And now down low, Burgess fighting off the defender, and he powers it up and in. It's a three-point lead for the Jackets. Hard to handle down in there, get the ball into him. Good job. And who? Yeah. Tucker, my – Tucker West broke on that, didn't get to it, and Landon Queenie makes some pay. He didn't have to worry about Tucker West patrolling the paint because no. he saw him fly by, so he was able to get that shot off. I'll tell you what, Tucker West gets that ball. It's getting slammed down, I would imagine. Here comes the freshman, Waylon Burgess. Now, this is the future here for Colefield. Remember, they got four seniors starting, so Waylon Burgess checks in. Senior Zach Armstrong is out there, and senior Blake Hudson hit the floor as well for the Jackets. It's a one-point game with Colefield in the lead. Now the Hudson kid, he's a real player. He's tough. Man. Here is Armstrong. Baseline jumper is good. Colefield pulls out by three again. Here in the first quarter of the District 3 consolation game from Oneida. Final night of the District 3A tournament. They've treated us very well here. The hospitality room has been very nice. And here's Wartburg. A three-point game. Got the shot away, but didn't get it to fall. And now Zach Armstrong gets it ahead to Rommel Conlon, back to Cole Hines. Hines starts left, goes right, 
It's knocked away by Good. Hines is able to save it back out to Conlon for three. No good. Rebound. Trouble collecting it, and there's Cole Hines sneaking in and putting it back up and in. And you see a lot of that out of, out of Cole Hines racing in to do stuff like that. First National Bank timeout for Wartburg. We'll take the same. 2-12 to play in the first quarter. It is Coalfield 17, Wartburg 12. Welcome back to Oneida. It's Coalfield and Wartburg in the first quarter. First National Bank bringing you the District 3A tournament. Don't forget, if you have an internet savvy, a non-internet savvy relative or friend that's got Highland Media, channels 190 and 191 brings you the games here tonight. I'm kind of in that boat with some folks. In the, <laughs> Me too. And Me we're too. thankful for that. Highland being able to bring you this tournament as well. Here's Andrew Good backing down out of the Wartburg timeout. Two points for the Bulldogs. That's how it's supposed to work. Now the inbounds with full court pressure from Wartburg, and it's going to be Colfield breaking it down court, laying it off the glass. No good. A battle for the rebound, and Good is able to pull it down. Waylon Burgess couldn't get the shot to fall, and now Wartburg into front court. Good has it swapped away, and then his pass is going to be intercepted, and it's going to be Blake Hudson all the way to the other end. The shot is no good, but he draws the foul. Hudson will go to the line for two. Yeah, good anticipation there of uh, picking that one off and getting it to the length of the floor, drawing the foul. Later tonight, the Oneida Indians and the Alder Springs Bobcats, round three for the year. Same two teams played for the district championship last year, and the Oliver Springs got their first laugh of the season uh, with the win in the district a year ago. And I had beaten them twice in the regular season. And then Oliver Springs um, got the win in the district championship and pushed Oneida to an elimination game. So the Indians are hoping to avoid the same fate tonight as they come in the top seed. First free throw is good. Second free throw won't go for Blake Hudson. We got a four-point game. And here's Wartburg back the other way. Reach-in foul on Hudson as Evan Crouch, freshman for Wartburg, was bringing it up court. Just tried to cut him off there and reached in <laughs> And got it. Yeah. So, four-point ball game at now. Well, this Wartburg team plays fast. Bounce feed into Queenie. Back to Crouch, and Crouch gets yeah. fouled again. Armstrong, his momentum, and yeah. Crouch stopped and a little took head the contact. Fake. Yeah, a little head fake there, and yeah, Crouch ran over him. That's, that's a freshman that's, uh, that's playing a savvy, above his years, say, That's it? a very savvy yeah. move right there, huh? Now to the corner, they set good up for the open three, but a hand in his face from Armstrong. Then it's lost out of bounds. I think Hudson clipped it last. Armstrong's going to go probably, what, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, something like that. And he, he just hard to shoot over. Wartburg will bring it around the perimeter, and they get it out to Crouch. Crouch drives past his man, <laughs> making nice moves yeah. to, to get an open passing lane there. And now it's going to be – Valiant attempt for Wartburg to try to save that, but down court, Landon Queenie. That, that's his football playing ability right there. He was a, I believe he was an all-district selection in football. As Good puts up the three that rattles Good, and it's a one-point game. Good's pretty good. He can hit it from, he can hit it from downtown. So now a one-point Coalfield lead. They'll get it across midcourt to Tucker West. West driving through, and it's going to be a blocking foul on Landon Queenie, he thought he had position. The official says no, the bucket will count, and Tucker West goes to the line for a free throw. Yep, here he goes. Looked to me, well, looked to me like a back of a head. It didn't be <laughs> What's that? Oh, like a, gotcha. Over, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm running slow tonight. Sorry, I'll try to pick You're it good. up. You're good. Tucker West free throw's good. It's back out to a four-point lead now for Colefield. And now Wartburg's Evan Crouch will bring it across midcourt. Starts right. Now working left. They cut off the lane. He kicks it out on the wing. Swint back to Queenie for the pull-up jumper. That's nice. That is very nice. Two-point game. Yeah, barely even moving there. Pretty. Short. Oh, Tucker West goes behind the back. Dumps it down to Hudson. He's got a trio of defenders around, and the ball's loose. Picked up by, I think, Burgess. Oh. Burgess, and he gets that soft roll at the end of the quarter. Good. It's going to be a four-point lead for Coalfield as one quarter's in the books. 
It is the Coalfield Yellow Jackets 23, the Wartburg Bulldogs 19. Welcome back to Oneida. You see the Twin K scoreboard has Coalfield up by four, Bo. Yeah, both teams actually coming out really strong in the first quarter. Wartburg 8 of 15, 3 of 8 from the floor. It's 53%, 38%. Uh, Coalfield still not found it from deep, 0 of 3, but 10 of 16 from the floor for 63%. Both teams uh, looks like Andrew Good for Wartburg and Braden Burgess for Coalfield, both leading their team with eight points each. Yeah, it seemed like that when when it looked like Coalfield was going to get out to a little bit of a a lead good has come back and hit a big shot for him. Evan Crouch, Lawson Swint, Blaine Blaylock, Lucas Wilson. There's a jumper from Crouch that won't go. And Austin Beasley on the floor for Wartburg. That's Coalfield nice running the break, nicely done. Coalfield's got Rommel Conlon, Blake Hudson, Braden Burgess, Tucker West, and Cole Hines on the floor. And now Coalfield has a six-point lead. And here's a short jumper that's going to be short. You're right. And it's Braden Burgess pulling it down on the rebound. He gets to Cole Hines as the Yellow Jackets are going to try to separate themselves here at the beginning of the second quarter. And this is Burgess to the baseline. His shot short. Battle for the rebound. Wow. That's a uh, loss and Swint out battling his size to pull down that rebound. Wartburg shot one and done at the other end. Tucker West reels it in, and now he'll bring it forward for the Yellow Jackets, nearly loses it, gets it over to Braden Burgess. Now Burgess driving baseline. Mm, might have been contacted from behind, and now we're going to have a foul on Wartburg. Austin Beasley crashing into the Yellow Jackets here. He'll pick up his first. Beasley got into him. May have seemed like you said. One before that, but uh, they do call the one on Beasley like out there knocking Rommel Conlon down to the ground. Burgess with the bounce feed into Hudson. Look at that hustle and steal for Lawson Swint. He gets to Queenie, down court. Queenie spins. Shot from the right side of the lane is good. It's back to a four-point game. He's yeah. got a really pretty mid-range jumper. He does. He does. And good spin move down here to avoid anybody trying to block his shot. Back at the other end, Hines draws the defense, Ooh. dumps it to Burgess. Yeah. Assist to Hines, Burgess converts. Back to six. Down court, Swint gets deep under there. A lot of defenders can't get the shot to fall. Wartburg picks it up with Blaylock. It rolls off the front of the iron. Now Hudson comes down. Seems like the physicality is beginning to yeah, notch is, up yeah. a bit between these two teams. Yeah, they're banging into each other pretty good here. With two minutes into the second quarter. Didn't expect anything less, though. Cole oh. Hines gets it over to Conlon. Conlon drives down near the baseline, stops, goes to Hudson. Hudson hits Burgess. Back out to Conlon. A little trouble getting control of it. Now he's got it down to Hudson in the corner. 540 and ticking in the first half. Conlon steps right, pulls up for the jumper, drains it. Big shot, pushes Cofield up by eight. Old Conlon's starting to get warmed up here a little bit, fellas. Now Swint drives into the paint. His jumper's going to be short, and it's going to be Burgess with the rebound to Hines. Cofield will be looking for a double-digit lead if they can score on this trip. Hines deals out to Burgess. Burgess loses the handle on it. Got some contact there from Ryan Hall, not enough for a foul, but it – it messed him up enough he fumbled it out of bounds. Yep, he sure did, and, and they're letting them play. The officials, the officials are, are, are letting them play. Let them bang on each other a little bit. Wartburg down eight with the basketball. Queenie, free throw line, pulls up, gets a hand in his yes. face. This time he can't knock it down on the rebound. Whew, my goodness, Ryan Hall giving his all. Yeah. Took a hard spill and jumps right back up. I yeah. would not have. You're talking about Zach Armstrong being there in the lane. and Man, that's so hard. That's so hard to shoot over him, him and, and Tucker West. So much length. Hines drives oh, through. Oh, that's pretty. Little no look to Tucker West from Cole Hines, and it's a double-digit lead for nice. Colefield. They're beginning to pull away, up by 10 now. Sunbright been on a drought. They need an answer. Is Andrew Good got it? It's going to be short. Rebound. Going to be reeled in by Conlon, and now he'll bring it up the right side of the court. Slows and deals to Cole Hines. 
So here we go. Colfield Hines driving through the running one-hander. It's good. That time he didn't dump it off to West. He took it himself, and he called the right number, huh? Yeah. Back Hines. at the other end. Yeah. Hines very capable of that all night. Here's like a steal here. for Cole Hines. He'll take it all the way up. He is not afraid of contact. No. He played quarterback for the Coalfield Yellow Jackets. He, he can did. handle it. Was was pretty good. At doing he was that. really good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he, he, you know, he's their field general. He's their leader on this team, and and uh, he makes this Coalfield team move. And he gets it up and down the, you know, the floor as good as anybody. Plays defense, gets those steals, and Cole Hines doing a great job again tonight. Knocks down free throws, just floaters, three pointers. Of course, his coach, his mother, a very successful yeah. girls coach, yep. a state tournament girls coach. So it's just an extension of her on the floor to have him out there. I bet he doesn't get any slack. <laughs> Four minutes to go, a little double dribble for Blaylock. It's going to be a turnover for Wartburg. And Colefield now with a newly minted 13-point lead will be coming right back at him. Yeah, yeah and it don't, I mean, it don't hmm. seem like it. Should be that much, but, yeah, they've kind of pulled away here. Warburg needs to do something here pretty quick. They missed a few shots getting down. But they've been trying to get it in the middle and, and shoot it over these two twin towers they've got down there. That's tough. So now with the basketball, Blaylock in a 13-point game looking in. And, oh, Lucas Wilson had his man pinned. And Colefield sells the charge. Oh, I don't is. know. I probably uh, could have gone for a three-second call. Yeah. But I don't know about the charge. And now Ooh. Tucker West will bring it up court for the Yellow Jackets. And now it's going to be Cole Hines for three. Uh, Good. Yeah, last time we played Colefield, he didn't get wound up like that. But now he's getting it going on now. Blaylock drives, kicks it to Queenie. Queenie, jump stop in the lane, needs help. Bounce feed out, going to be to Robinson. Robinson nice. fires up a three. That's his first shot again. That's a freshman. Yep. Ian Robinson knocks down the three-pointer. Colefield turns it over, and they thought it was out of bounds. It was out of bounds. The officials did not call it out of bounds, and the clock buzzed. Yeah, it was Cole. Yeah, Colefield had the basketball. And the, the clock buzzed, but the official did not indicate it was right. out of bounds. Yeah. Good job, Jason Terry. <laughs> JT, count on him. He's been practicing all day, boys. He's know, had that, he's had that finger and he makes it, And he makes a mistake like that. Now, pin down low, turning for the shot. Lucas Wilson that time was able to get the shot off and did not have a charge to his credit. And then back the other way, this is – Zachary Hamby back out top to Cole Hines. We've got an 11-point game. Hines knifing through. Nice. Little no look. Even Tucker West was surprised. Yeah. All of a sudden, hey, that's the basketball. Yeah. Man, Hines is playing playing great. Yeah, eight. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Queenie in the paint. Jumper rims out. What were you going to say? Eight points, four assists, two rebounds already for him. Uh-huh. Back the other way, and this is going to be Zachary Hamby to the baseline. This bounce uh-huh. feed's going to be stolen away. And this will be Lawson Swint all the way to the other end. Oh, my goodness. The ball's tipped away. Swint goes airborne, and we're going to have a blocking foul called on Cole Hines. But since Swint didn't have the basketball, they'll have to bring it in under the basket, right? Yeah. Just got a replay on that pass by Cole Hines. Spectacular. Burgess checks in. Chase Lettner returns or, or enters the game for Colefield. Make that. They're getting their seven-footers out to get a little rest. <laughs> oh, look Look at the physicality now down low. Oh, yeah. And now the shot is going to be banked in by Andrew Good. He can get them up now. It's the first national bank. <laughs> They're bringing you the game. You don't like that one, Mark? What? I'm mm. looking for a T-shirt. Give me one. You can have them all, man, if you just come Whatever. up with it. Ian Robinson, here's another freshman. Down court, pulls up, shot, won't go. Rebound, Braden Burgess. He's a senior. And he goes out ahead to Waylon Burgess. He's a freshman with a minute 50 to go in the first half. It's a 10-point lead for Colefield. They've got the basketball. Andrew Good trying to harass Cole Hines. He just drives past him, kicks it to Waylon Burgess for the baseline jumper, nothing but net. 
It's what you do when you're the quarterback. He has eyes everywhere on this floor right now. Mm. Back the other way. Here's Good spinning. Gets down under, lays it off the glass, and it is good. That's a nice take. Now the inbounds to Burgess, back to Hines. Good. Trying to work against him here. He, he gets fired up for these matchups, doesn't he? And we saw that happen against Oneida, and now it's going to be a turnover back the other way. Hines thought he was fouled. No whistle. Ian Robinson down to front court. Hits Blaine Blaylock. He's wide open for three. It's going to be off on the rebound. Ooh. Got a oh, clear, clear out. Got a shot hit by Lucas Wilson, and he was fouled. He kind of cleared space. <laughs> Watch him right before this. Oh, my Jeez. goodness. Yeah. Waylon Burgess caught a rough end to that. But it cuts it to eight, and now at the line for one is going to be Lucas Wilson with a minute two to go in the first half. Yeah, they're battling back. I'm going to redirect you all to, to look at it. This is a lot of points yeah. in a half oh, of yeah. basketball. It is. The shot is good for Lucas Wilson. You'll remember following the lead of them Wilbur girls last time, battling back. Cole Field trying to work it in, and – Burgess trying to bring it in, couldn't make the connection with Lettner, so here is Wartburg's boys with a chance to try to carve into a seven-point lead. They'll bring uh, Lucas Wilson back in. He's been successful down in the paint if they can get it to him. Is that what you would do here, Mark? I'll certainly try my best. Here's the bounce feed into Good. Good on the drive, steps back at the free throw line, can't get the shot to fall, Waylon Burgess. Long down court, Conlon, tough catch among defenders. Steps back, kicks to the corner, three-pointer is oh, good. Oh, oh. That's a killer from yeah, Zachary Hamby. Yeah. Back the other way. The and freshman. Good to the baseline. Hanging jumper won't go. Rebound lost out, touched last by Coldfield, though. Right here. There he, it is. Yeah, gets set up by Ronald Conlon and knocks it down. Ten-point lead for Coldfield at this point. 36.5 seconds remain in the first half. Let me be clear. It's luck because, you know, Dave Markham was sitting over in the bleachers behind him. That's why he was able to hit that three a minute ago. <laughs> okay. Queenie gets it out. Now on the drive, Swint. Circus shot up yeah. no good. Rebound pulled down Zach Armstrong. He'll get it to Conlon with 20 seconds on the first half clock. Conlon to the freshman Hamby again. Now Hamby works off a pick around the top with 11, 10 seconds. This is going to be Zachary Hamby driving down the baseline with five, four seconds, three. Burgess back to Hamby. He'll fire the three. No good. Tip. No good. End of the first half. Coalfield by ten after two quarters. Your score. It is the Coalfield Yellow Jackets 44 and the Wartburg Bulldogs 34. Welcome back to Oneida and the District 3A Constellation game. As the Hopefield Yellow Jackets lead the Wartburg Bulldogs 44-34 with our first half stats, Bo Kidd. And gentlemen, both teams doing very well thus far uh, from the floor tonight. We'll start it off with Wartburg, 14 of 35, 40% from the floor, 5 of 12 from 30 for 41, or almost 42%. And one of one from the free throw line there led in the first half by Andrew Good. 13 points, two assists, uh, a rebound and a steal. Nine points, two rebounds for Landon Quinney. Seven points and a rebound for Lucas Wilson. And three points off the bench for Ian Robinson. Big key to that, though, Wartburg only seven rebounds in the first half for Wartburg. For Coalfield. 19 of 28 from the floor in the first half, 68% shooting in the first half, two of six from three for 33%, four of six from the free throw line for 67%. They've got two scorers already in double figures. Braden Burgess has 10 points, seven rebounds, 10 points, two rebounds also for Tucker West, six points, four assists, two rebounds for Rommel Conlon, eight points, five assists, and two rebounds for Cole Hines. Three points on the board for Zach Hamby. Four points, two rebounds for Waylon Burgess. Two points, four rebounds for Zach Armstrong. And Blake Hudson has a point and a rebound. 20 rebounds for Coalfield in the first half. They've out-rebounded them 20-7. Wow. Uh, turnovers, though, Coalfield has committed nine turnovers in the first half, but still hold a 10-point lead. 
All right, thank you both for that. We're going to keep it right here, and we're going to go straight into our out-of-town scoreboard sponsored by Helenwood Foods. This week at Helenwood Foods, RC product two liters for only 99 cents. And for $9.99 a pound, you can pick up ribeyes and New York strips. That's at Helenwood Foods. Bo? Over in District 1 in the consolation game, Unica is – Currently upsetting North Green, they're up 47 to 41 with six minutes to, or with uh, the fourth quarter left to go in that contest. Uh, over in District Two, it is Hancock County leading Washburn 26 to 17 at the half. Of course, here it's 44 34 in favor of Coalfield uh, entering halftime, and down in District Four, it's Farragut trailing Bearden 49 to 47 with three minutes to play in that game. Thank you both for that, and that is the Helenwood Foods out-of-town scoreboard. We're going to take a break here on the Vantage Point Financial Halftime Report. When we come back, we're going to have B.J. Gisland side in here and tell us a little bit about what's coming up this spring here on the IH Sports Network. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the Vantage Point Financial Halftime Report. Joining us now, he did the play-by-play for us last year. Thursday and Friday, B.J. Gisselson. B.J., normally basketball season concludes the broadcast season for us, but not this year. Right, Kevin. Uh, we're, we're talking about on the IH Sports Network coming up here in the spring. We've been doing this kind of off and on for the last couple of years, picking up maybe Oneida versus Scott High soccer. I think that's going to continue again this spring. I'm fairly certain we can announce that, but we'll see at least a few soccer games called this year. I'll probably be involved in that. You might see Travis Selvage involved in that as well. But what, what's also out there maybe is some, some bat and ball sports, maybe some softball, maybe some baseball. I see someone over here excited about that. If Bo, can, <laughs> Bo will be, could be out there with us if we do that. That would be really exciting to see. There's talks going on on that, but I don't know of anything concrete yet. But I do know that we will be running some soccer this spring. All right, that sounds great. And, of course, you can tune into the IH Sports Network and get details on that whenever those games come up. Appreciate, once again, you doing the games last week, done a great job for us in Tim's absence, and uh, looking forward to hearing you do some games this spring. I appreciate you guys always making me feel welcome when I'm out here. We, I love you guys, love being out here with you. Do want to say on this first half, I think if Wartburg wants to get back in this game, they need to stop settling for shots. Yes. We've seen that quite a bit in the first and second quarter. Run down the court, maybe one pass, chuck it up. And what Bo was saying, they were out-rebounded so badly, they're one and done down here. Slow down, settle down, start looking for better shots like Colefield is doing. I totally agree. We're going to take about a minute break here, Stuart, and then when we return, we'll have the second half of this one. It's Colefield 44, Wartburg 34, when we return for the second half of the consolation game right after this. Welcome back. We are ready for the second half of action. It looks like everybody else is too. It is the consolation game. And Coalfield has a 10 point lead as we start the third quarter here from Oneida. First National Bank brings you the District 3A tournament. We got about six quarters left if everything goes regulation. That's a big if. Yeah. And uh, Wartburg has on the floor Landon Queenie, Lucas Wilson, Blaine Blaylock, Andrew Good, and Lawson Swint. Tucker West, you can see, is on the court for Colefield, along with Cole Hines, Rommel Conlon, Braden Burgess, and Zachary Hamby. And now Wartburg loses the handle on it out of bounds and a quick timeout. It's a First National Bank timeout for Wartburg. 7.26 to go third quarter. Your score is Colefield 46, Wartburg 34. Welcome back out of a Wartburg timeout. It's a 12-point lead for Coalfield Yellow Jackets. Wartburg's going to go full-court pressure. Braden Burgess will bring it in on the bounce feed to Rommel Conlon. They don't trap. It's just a full-court man, but Tucker West's man retreats, and that's Lucas Wilson back down into the paint. And now it's going to be Cole Hines working off a pick from West through the paint, loops the shot up there. It rolls off no good. Battle for the rebound. Too much size for Coalfield, but it's knocked away by Swint, giving Wartburg a second chance, but Coalfield comes up with it again. Now Hines to Conlon for three, no good. Rebound, 
Tucker West. It's not over the back if you don't touch them. And now Lucas Wilson battling Braden Burgess. Burgess wins. <laughs> Burgess just tough down there, getting in there and getting a hold of that ball. Blaylock drives down. Now they kick it out. It's Lawson Swint. The yeah. two, good. Swint's tough. He uh, uh, can hit them pull-up jumpers from anywhere. Now Cole Hines with the bounce feed ahead. Tucker West just wants to drive down. Runs into a wall in the form of Lucas Wilson. It's a big wall. Loses the ball out of bounds. <laughs> he's not going to move, that's for sure. Now. Yeah, he, he's tough. Now it's going to be Hines. Shot won't go. They work it back around to Hines. He finds Burgess down low. Wilson providing the defense, but Burgess just too too tough. Yeah, yeah. And Wilson don't want to pick up that foul, and, and he just, you know, been coached to, to get them hands up, and that's what he did. Good job by Burgess shooting over him. He's trying to work for position yeah. down there, and he does work hard enough to get Burgess to foul him. You can front him, but, but you can't come around him like that and, and body up with him. That's what he did. So, I mean, Burgess is giving up some, some height yeah. to Wilson here. The bounce feed is into Wilson. He'll take it into Burgess and lay it <laughs> off the glass. We got a battle going between yeah. these two big guys. They're just hammering into each other, man. The inbounds stolen by Lawson Swint. I'm impressed with his hustle. I am Trophy too. Masters hustle top play. And now oh. Queenie puts up the two, no good. And then there's Swint called for the foul. Yeah, did you see Tucker West, though, how he made – I mean, he blocked that oh, shot. He has Lawson been in on Swint. more – uh, getting their hand up there and getting make them shoot around that big old. He's a big old long kid. And, yeah, and oh, man. That's, yeah, there's no doubt about that. Been, t- been tough to shoot around him tonight for Wolfberg. Burgess will bring it in on the bounce feed. It's going to be Hines. Long down court. He's looking to get it to Conlon. He makes the catch. Wow. Lays it up good. That should have been a foul. Was, was Conlon a receiver? Because yes. it sure looked like yes. that kind of connection. And then the layup is good. That's a seventh assist for Hines tonight. It's a 14-point lead for his Yellow Jackets, and here's Good from the free throw line, oh, knocking it down. Man, uh, West got out on him. Yeah. He had yeah. to get some arch on that one. And Good shot, been able to hit a, f- a few of those over West. And here's Conlon in transition, bounce feed. Tucker West takes a dribble, scoops through, and gets man. it to go. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Lucas Wilson just does that. What am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. I agree with him. I do, too. West is a play. Back the other way, good for three, and it gets up into the structure. That's going to be a back over to Coalfield here. 5.07 to play, third quarter. So we know that these two teams are destined to travel to either Harriman or Oakdale, depending on the outcome of that one later tonight. Now Hines will bring it ahead to Tucker West. Runs into some pretty good defense there. Kicks it out to Conlon for three. It's no good. Yeah, then Tucker West, he's he's over the back, makes contact that time. Yeah. Yeah. If you can reach over there and grab a hold, that's one thing. But when you get into them, they get him that time. Jim, when we're talking about Braden Burgess, he's already got himself a double double tonight 14 points and 10 rebounds. Yeah. He's capable of that. Absol- absolutely he is. Oh, Wilson's, Wilson's pinning down in the paint there with Burgess. That's an interesting battle to watch. And now here's Good driving, pulls up, and knocks down the jumper. See that little double clutch? Staying right in that 12-14. Yeah. I mean, uh-huh. these teams are playing back and forth right now, but Wartburg's not cutting in, and Coalfield's not able to expand that lead. Here's a jumper, no good. Rebound Lucas Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> and now ahead to Lawson Swint, takes it up against Tucker West. Brave. Might not have been wise. No, no. It's no. It's gonna get, you go. get that out of here. And then I'm going to get it again. Man, he's just a tower down there. But, I mean, Swint just 90 miles an hour. He goes. Yeah. He just timeout. plays hard. Colfield wants a timeout. 4.18 to go, third quarter. We take the break. Your score, it is Colfield 54, Wartburg 42. <laughs> Welcome back to Oneida, 54-42. Coalfield in the lead by 12. Mark, it's pretty much stayed right around here for about half it, a quarter. Yeah, it, it has. And the first half, uh, Wartburg battled back. They get up by seven or eight points. Uh, Coalfield would. Wartburg battled back and cut it to four. And now they've stretched it out, you know, to this deficit here. And, and uh, 12-point game. And, and it stayed right here for the for the 
best part of this quarter. But Warburg, My turn. Warburg, oh, <laughs> Warburg's yet. not going away, though. They certainly aren't going away. Ian Robinson, the freshman for Wartburg, is in there. And now Robinson drives in, pulls up for the yeah. jumper. Good. If they can get in on that elbow, man, and, and, and get it up there before Wes can get out to them. You look at the freshmen on this Wartburg yeah. roster. There's, there's a lot of things to work with here from Wartburg in the coming years. Now the pass out to Rommel Conlon. Can't hang on to it. So it's it. ten, could, could get it to single digits here. Yeah, could cut it to eight here. And it's the same thing that, that plagued Sunbright last night again in the girls' game is that, you know, they kept making – they had the game in hand, and then they kept making mistakes, turning the ball over, not taking much time off the clock, and Wartburg just kept battling back. Finally won. Robinson with the basketball. Look at Lucas Wilson posting down there. Hudson and Zach Armstrong down in the paint to try to counter him. They certainly have the size. Um, Wilson's looking for his opportunity here as the ball is worked around. Now the bounce feed. Blaylock Wilson goes for the quick pin. Now they go back out. It's going to yeah. be a three-pointer. No good. Rebound. Blaylock bounce feed. Wilson lays it up. Good. Ooh, it's an eight-point eight. game. Single digit. Lucas Wilson just keeps working. Conlon picks it up in rear court. Bounce feed to Zach Armstrong. Out to Cole Hines. Almost another turnover there. Yeah. I mean, if Wartburg had pressed that, they might have got them to 10 seconds. You don't know. Now Hines drives through, and he says, enough of this foolishness. Yeah. Dumps it down to Zach Armstrong. And, yeah, and you can't, let, you can't let Cole Hines, you know, get in there like that because that's what he's going to do. Now here's Robinson for the two. No good. Rebound. Battle for Waylon Burgess comes up with it. Now to Cole Hines. Yeah, it's like he senses, hey, we need to get, yeah. get this back under control. So here he goes. Conlon back to Hines. If that's what you got to do, you got to get in his hip pocket. Wow, tough shot. Hines doesn't get the call there that he was expecting, and Wilson comes away with a rebound. Down ahead, Robinson's bounce feed into the feet of Burgess, picked up by Queenie, out to good. He doesn't take the three. He pulls in for the two. It's going to be short. Rebound, How Robinson. In the world? Oh. The freshman came up with it but couldn't hit the putback, and Conlon comes what? away with it. How did he get up over them guys? There's a trampoline under yeah. him. That's how. Hudson drives to his right, puts the shot up. Good. Challenged by Wilson, but Hudson knocks it back to 12. Yeah, big shot right there by Hudson. Long down court, and here is Robinson. Nice soft left-handed yeah. jumper drops through. And you don't see a whole lot of that, those lefties get out there like that. That's great. Back to 10. Hines into front court, working to his left. Dumps it down to Hudson. Hudson pitches to Armstrong for the jumper. Good. Nice yeah. unselfish basketball for Colefield there. Yeah. Andrew Good feels like it's time for a three-pointer. Can't get it to go. The rebound is going to be Cole Hines. Probably should have had that rebound, Wartburg. Hines trying to draw a foul here against Good. Doesn't get it, so just drives all the way to the other end. Shot won't go. Tip by Armstrong won't go. It's out of bounds. I think Queenie touched it last, but they're going to say it was last touched by Colefield. And they put they got to call a foul here. Oh. Yeah. 2-4. Oh, okay. So that's that's what happened. Yeah. Zach Armstrong's called for the foul in a 12-point game. And he was just, I mean, there at the beginning, he looked like he was going to get the rebound, but he kept leaning over into him, and that's what they got him for. This uh, attendance starting to thicken in here as the championship game creeps closer. Mark, are you nervous? You know, I'm not a bit. Not a bit nervous about this thing. But There's Lucas Wilson catch down low. Oh. He's going to the line. Armstrong called for the foul. You're but not? It, no, I'm not, but I, I know Jake King is. He, oh, he is. He is. Yeah. It's, that's tough. That's tough. He gets like this. You know, he was in this game. He was last night. <laughs> yes, he was. He, he told me, I wish we'd play it tonight, but now he's had to think about it and think about it. And, you know, and, and in that game last year, you know, uh, going into that, he thought we've got a really good shot of winning this thing. And Oliver Springs upset him, I believe. That was a little bit of an upset there. Very capable Oliver Springs team, certainly. Oh, my goodness, uh, yes. Yeah. And listen, they are tough again. So, we'll see. Up and down the lineup, they can hurt you different uh -huh. ways. They've got the combinations. Armstrong's going to be fouled by Swint here. Kind of had two hands on his back there. But very physical Oliver Springs team this yeah. year. Yes. 
and that's where the. I mean, if they let if they let that banging go on, man, it's that's going to, to be, our disadvantage. That is to our disadvantage, yeah, because that's what they like to do. So now Waylon Burgess will bring it in back to the game at hand. Sorry, we lost focus there for a moment. Rommel Conlon gets it over to Zachary Hamby. 12-point game. It's been pretty much an even quarter between these two teams. Now Hamby fires it over to Waylon Burgess. Bounce feed down in. Blake Hudson trying to back down on the block. Now trying to work for a shot. Swint blocks it. Giving up the size wow. and Swint blocks yeah. it. Throws it off of Hudson. You, Good play you, right there. You yeah, love I mean, to have a guy like that on yes. your team. Yeah, just, I mean, he goes up, blocks the shot, and then, you know, ha has the head about him to get grab the basketball. And Do you remember what year he is? He's a, he's a sophomore. He is he's, a sophomore. You're right. Yeah. So now Queenie with the bounce feed to Good. Good. Nice dish. Wilson waited for West and, and probably shouldn't have. Couldn't get the shot to go. Queenie. Cleans up the rebound in the paint. Hanging jumper oh. rattles, won't go. Tucker West comes down with it. Now he's on the run. Midcourt, free throw line, dishes off to Hudson. Hudson's shot's no good, but he's fouled. 4.7 seconds in the third. Hudson goes to the line for two. Yeah, it's, it's just tough. Uh, Tucker West down there trying to shoot over him. And, and Zach Armstrong trying to shoot over him every time. I mean, just about any time you go up in the paint, your your shot's liable to get blocked and go the other way. So, so the shot from Hudson is good. It's a 13-point lead for the Coalfield Yellow Jackets. Hudson taking his time for a second free throw. This one's on the way. Good as well. And tough. The thing about Tucker West is he can grab a hold of it, Tim, and, and go. I mean, he can get down yeah. the floor with it. Here's Andrew Good putting up a three that won't go at the buzzer. That's three quarters in the books. Coalfield with a 14-point lead as we take the break. It's Coalfield 62, Wartburg 48. Welcome back to Onada High School. After three quarters of play in the District 3 consolation game, which First National Bank has allowed us to live stream here tonight, and we thank them for that. They'll bring you the championship too. Bo, it's a 14-point lead for Coalfield. Yes, it is, and Coalfield, the reason being, 58, almost 58% from the field, 27 of 47 on the night, and they've out-rebounded Wartburg 31 to 15 on that, the night. That'll, be, that'll get it done. That's some pretty good shooting, Tex. <laughs> All right, here's the fourth and final quarter. Wartburg's got work to do. They got to get some stops. They got to get points. And this is Lawson Swint to the hoop for the layup. Good, nice start. Yeah, and Swint just going up in among the the dang Giants down there. Back the other way. This is going to be Zachary Hamby with the basketball, initiating things here as Cole Hines gets a brief rest. And now the dump down. Con Conlon juggling shot blocked by Ooh. Wilson. And now Wartburg going to try to go on a run here. Down court, they get it to the freshman Robinson. Oh His shot blocked out of bounds by Tucker West, the senior. Tucker West don't even have to hardly leave his feet. But he, he did. Is, he is no. long. Yeah. <laughs> He's had probably six. There it goes, man. That, probably six or seven blocks tonight, I'm sure. Blaylock to Wilson. Robinson back over to Blaylock. Bounce feed Swint again. Oh, yeah. Good ball movement down there. That's no, get, It's a 10. Yeah. And getting them down there to, to, to get up in the air on you and then feeding the ball underneath like that. Down court, Colefield looks to Burgess. A little high-low with West. Instead, he goes out to Conlon. Elbow jumper won't go. Rebound. Battled away uh -huh. from Wilson by the freshman Waylon Burgess. That's a big offensive rebound Absolutely. for Colefield. So they have the 10-point lead and a chance to try to expand it. Yeah. Breaking on it here, Swint, and he'll be called for the foul. And Tucker going over and helping him up. That's his third, yeah. I think. Look at that. that is Swint's third, yes. Feeding him down below there. And, and Swint's out, but 
You watch. Coach Coker doesn't leave Swint out long. No, get him about 30 seconds, and he'll pop right back in. Burgess will bring it in. Cole Hines speaking him up, being out long. I don't think he'll leave again. Here's Waylon Burgess from the baseline. It rolls gently around the iron. Good. The freshman knocks it down. From Big Brother. Back the other way. Lucas Wilson takes on West. Goes up with it. Couldn't get it to go. Almost had his own rebound, then loses it out of bounds. It may, it may have, have been good good defense right there by Tucker West, but he may have been just a little too far up underneath the backboard. Mm-hmm. We had, a, had another buzz incident here. JT. Work, working out well, the was, nervousness. Well, he was, actually, he was actually there, but he just wasn't. Visible. Yes. Talking about the sub. Now the inbounds. Braden Burgess tried to overthrow Tucker West, but I don't yeah. think he can do it. He takes it all the way to the other end. And then draws a foul. That's what you're talking about, Mark. A big guy, the biggest guy on the court, but he's able to put it on the floor and take it the length of the court. Yeah, and he can get down here in about three steps. Two, it seems like. Right there, yeah. Two dribbles. Yeah. yeah. I mean, seriously. It's crazy. This team's got a 12-point lead. This free throw is good for Good basketball Tucker player. West. Yep. Yep. Good basketball player. Uh, has helped this Cofield team to get out to this, the 13-point lead that they have now. Second toss from Tucker West. That is good. And now it will be Wartburg down 14. Does that sound familiar? It's been right around 12 and 14, Wartburg. They've been getting points. They just haven't been getting stops. Andrew Good weaving through, bounce feed to Blaylock at the free throw line to the corner. Robinson fires a three, good. The freshman, Robinson gets a three, and Wartburg takes the first National Bank timeout. Six to play. It's an 11-point game. It's Coldfield 66, Wartburg 55. Welcome back to Oneida. There you see the twin K scoreboard. It's Coldfield 66, Wartburg 55. It's the District 3A tournament brought to you by First National Bank here from Oneida. It is championship night for the boys, but first it's consolation night for these two teams. Coldfield in the advantage. Here's the run out to Cole Hines. Down court, lays it up and scores. Pushes it back to 13. Yeah, that's a big answer after hitting that three for Wartburg. And that was out of a Wartburg timeout. Yeah. That's tough. And now Queenie. Gets it out top, Austin Beasley. And now to Good. Now around to Queenie. Back out, Blaylock. Fires a three, no good. Rebound pulled in, Braden Burgess. He gets it over to Zachary Hamby. Hamby's in front court. Spinning gives to the trailing Waylon Burgess. Fakes the give, drives. Leaves it over the front of the iron, good. Now Cofield, their biggest lead of the second half. It's 15, 70 to 55. And here's a three-pointer up no good from Beasley, and Colfield has the basketball, their biggest lead of the game, and five minutes to go, and Coach Carmen Hahn says, take your time. Yeah, slow it down, take the air out of the ball, and get some of this time off here, get out of here with a win. And oh. that's a nice dish from Cole Hines to Waylon Burgess. And they do it every time. Wartburg just collapses on Hines like that. Now here's Good with a big rebound at the other end, blocked by Burgess. As we mentioned, these two teams are destined for the road Saturday night. One will go to Harriman, one will go to Oakdale. That will be determined later tonight in the District 4A championship game. And it looks like uh, the winner of that game is going to get Wartburg. The loser will get Coalfield. It's a 17-point game, and it's going to be Tucker West looking to add to that. Like that might go down. He yeah, was, I was thinking he might yeah, flush that, it. Yeah, that was uh, – he was up there on that one. So, Tucker West, a couple of dribbles. Flicks the ball, shoots the free throw, and it's good. I don't know it's about now you guys. 18. But I, old Tucker West got a real shot at, at getting player of the game. He's, uh, he's had himself a doozy. I, well, but I mean – I will nominate Cole Hines as well. And Burgess. Braden Burgess. I didn't say it was done. I see. I understand. 
Back, back at the other end, Ian Robinson fires up a three, no good. Yeah. Rebound Tucker West. West fires it out ahead to Waylon Burgess, who rips it over to Rommel Conlon for the three, no good. Rebound Lucas Wilson. Wilson gets it to Robinson, and now Blaylock. Blaylock over to the corner. And this is going to be Evan Crouch. You know, Crouch, the freshman, he played a lot in that first half. We haven't seen him this second half until now. Kind of mysteriously not out there for a while. I wonder why. Maybe uh, something maybe something going on with him. Who knows? Uh, on the Wartburg side, I would say if I were picking players, Lucas Wilson would probably be my guy. Yep. And then, but I'm going to say my Trophy Masters hustle guy would be Lawson Swint. Or good at this yeah. point. Yeah, Swint. At this point. Yeah. Andrew Goods had a good ball a he good has. ball game tonight. Robinson to Blaylock. Now here's Crouch with the basketball. An 18-point game, and here's Waylon Burgess. And kind of lost focus on it there yeah. at the last minute. Try, I think he was trying to make a decision, what am I going to do with this? And If I got a teammate here that I can <laughs> kick it out to, or am I going to the hole? Yep. Yeah. Never a decision I ever had to make, Mark. Me neither. I don't know how hard that is. Me neither. I never had to, to worry about what to do with the football. <laughs> or what to do with the basketball. What are you laughing at, Bo? I didn't either. <laughs> yeah, trust me. I didn't either. Yeah. You all knew what to do with the person that had the football. That's first. right. That's for sure. That's right. 3.15 to go. It's an 18-point lead for Colefield to Cole Hines. The rarity I had it in my hands, I, I just fell. Yeah, well, <laughs> actually, yeah, you fell on one for a <laughs> touchdown one time. Yeah. Tucker West with the basketball now for Colefield. It's been like 60 years Look at ago. Swint, hey, look hey, at hey, Swint hey, battling, hey. bodying up Tucker yeah. West. Getting the stop a little bit there. And back at the other end, Hall kicks it out. That's going to be Blaylock. Shoots it over the outstretched arm of Tucker West. No good. The follow by Evan under. Crouch is good. Yeah, up and under right there. 2.40 to play in consolation action. Championship game between the Oliver Springs Bobcats and the Oneida Indians. Shortly on its way. This one winding down. Tucker West with the basketball out to Rommel Conlon. So last night we had overtime in the consolation game. It doesn't appear we'll have that, but you remember how quick Wartburg's girls yeah, we scored did. last night. So I guess you can't ever say never. And here's Crouch with the pull-up jumper no good. Rebound Hall back up no good. He, did, he didn't even have to move. He just swatted. Tucker West just swatted that one out of there. So yeah. Cole Hines back the other way. Guarded here by Robinson. Fires it over to Burgess. Minute 50 to play in this consolation game as Colefield works the clock down. And Wartburg's going to pressure, but they're not going to foul. Hines flicks it over to Tucker West in the left corner. West on the drive. And now... Tries to get it to Hudson. It's turned over, and it's going to be Swint. Back the other way. Shot. Good. Lawson Swint. Timeout, Wartburg will take the same. 127 to play in this one. It's Coalfield 74, Wartburg 60. We got a flip. He dropped in, did a flip. Welcome back to Oneida. There's the consolation game with 127 remaining. On the clock out of a Wartburg timeout, a First National Bank timeout. Have managed to get it down to eight points, Wartburg has, and that's about as Or low, did. Yeah, that's about as low yeah. as they've got it here in the second half. But got a minute 27. They're going to do something. They better do it now. Colefield will bring it in with Bruce Brown. Well, it doesn't appear that that's their intent. Nope. As the oh. young, younger players are in. Evan Crouch commits the foul here, and it will be Bruce Brown to take it to the other end. So it would appear the competitive phase of this one has come to a close. I believe you're right. So we can, uh, as we watch this one close out, we will know that we can turn our attention to a championship game. Last night, the Oneida Lady Indians secured their 34th district tournament championship. They'll be putting a new number up on the banner. 2023 goes up for the Oneida boys. 
They're looking for number 22. They will be looking for number 22. Now, their last one was in 2020. These seniors were freshmen. And that was the first one Oneida had in 20 years. Yeah. Doggone, that's a lot of winning, you know. They've won the regular season every year. But the district tournament championship, they got as freshmen. They're going to try to get it as seniors tonight. With a minute 15 to play, it's going to be Coalfield basketball again. And, Mark, we continue to see people file through the doors, find places to sit slash stand slash be. You better got busted again. Yeah, I believe John, I believe John Strunk is coming in here for this one. He thinks he's going to sit up here between us. Oh, really? That's what he thinks. Inbounds will be for Coalfield to Braden Willard. Now back ahead. It's going to be a jumper no good from Coalfield. And Jonathan Bingham loses the handle on it. Still a loose basketball. Now down in the paint, one of the big yellow jackets, Caleb Langley, a freshman down there. With 48 seconds, they lob it down for Caleb. Can't hang on to it. It goes off of Wartburg out of bounds with 44 seconds remaining. Freshman, big, big old kid too, man. He's he's got some he's got some good years coming. And now Wartburg trying to defend the Bulldog. Uh, I'm sorry, the Yellow Jackets here. Pass goes out. Running one hander from the Jackets won't go. Backside rebound put back is no good. Caleb Langley has it knocked away out of bounds. It will stay in the possession of the Coalfield Yellow Jackets. Now driving through. Here's going to be a three-pointer from the wing for Coalfield. It is good. Bruce Brown knocks this one down. Downtown Bruce Brown. Now the shot from three-point range for Wartburg won't go. Brown gets the rebound with eight, seven, six seconds remaining. Oh. Trying to split defenders, but instead we're going to have a pushing foul. That will be against Coalfield, but it's only the team sixth with four seconds remaining. Oh, it's team eight. Oh. They've got them backwards for some reason. I see. Yep, so it's going to put we Coalfield at the line. Matthew Denton knocks it down. All right. First free throw's good. Second free throw rims out no good with three seconds to go. Wartburg midcourt heave. It won't go, and that is final tonight. The Coalfield Yellow Jackets win the consolation game of the District 3A tournament. We will take a break and come back with our Danny King Lumber post game. And then we'll get you set with the Baby J's Pizza pregame for the championship tonight between Oneida and Oliver Springs. All that and more to come on the IHS in your final once again. The Coalfield Yellow Jackets 79, the Wartburg Bulldogs 60. And now welcome to the Danny King Lumber postgame report as the Coalfield Yellow Jackets advance. Well, they both advance, but the Coalfield Yellow Jackets will be your third seed team out of District 3A. Warburg Bulldogs will come in fourth out of the district and will be on the road this coming Saturday night. For our final game statistics, Bo Kidd. Gentlemen, for Yes. Wartburg, 26 of 70 from yes. the floor for, 30, er, for 37%. 6 of 22 from 3 for 27%. 5 of 11, or er, 2 it. of 5 from the free throw line for 40%. They were led Ooh, on the night by Andrew Good. 17 points, 2 assists, 2 rebounds. Uh, also 12 points, 5 rebounds for Lucas Wilson. 10 points, 4 rebounds for Lawson Swint. 10 points, 3 rebounds off the bench for Ian Robinson. 9 points, 3 rebounds for Landon Quinney. On the night, two points for Evan Crouch off the bench as well. Wartburg only commits eight turnovers on the night, but only had 24 rebounds as a team. For Coalfield, 32 of 58 from the floor for 55% on the, or on the night. Three of 12 from three for 25%. 12 of 16 from the free throw line for 75%. Led on the night by Tucker West. 18 points, six rebounds, four blocks on the night 
for Big Tucker West. Braden Burgess also a big night. 14 points, 13 rebounds on the night for the big fella. Also 10 points, 10 assists, and four rebounds for Cole Hines. 10 points, four assists off the bench for Waylon Burgess. Eight points, three rebounds, five assists for Rommel Conlon. Three points for Zachary Hamby. Uh, four I'll points get- and a rebound for Bruce Brown. Six points, five rebounds for Zach Armstrong off the bench. And five points, two rebounds for Blake Hudson. 40 rebounds on the night for Colefield. That's a big difference uh, in this ball game also, but did turn the ball over 15 times on the evening. Thank you, Bo. When we return to the Danny King Lumber Post Game Report, it'll be time for our Trophy Masters Hustle Award and the First National Bank Player of the Game. We'll be back right after this. Here we go. Welcome back to another of the District 3A Tournament, and it's time now for your first National Bank Player of the Game. Bo, what you got? Player of the Game, uh, got to go tonight with Tucker West for Coalfield. What a night that the young man had, 18 points, six rebounds, uh, four blocks, three assists, and 23 minutes of play. The young man was uh, altering shots all night long. Defensively, he was strong. Uh, offensively, Get it under the basket. He was all over it. Player of the game, Tucker West. All right. Trophy Masters wanted to recognize somebody who maybe would usually go unrecognized but uh, was a big contributor, and that's the Trophy Masters Hustle Award. Who gets that tonight? The court general, Cole Hines, 10 points, 10 assists, four rebounds, uh, a steal on the night in just 18 minutes of play. Young man was uh, all over the floor and distributing to his teammates tonight. Big key to the reason why they shot 55% from the floor. All right, there's your Danny King Lumber post game report here on this consolation game, and it's time now to turn our attention to the Baby J's Pizza pregame report for the championship game the Oneida Indians, the Oliver Springs, the Royal Oaks Pharmacy Scouting Report, the Helenwood Foods out of town scoreboard. All that stuff is coming up next. 